Have you ever wondered how substances mix and separate? This is the fascinating world of mixtures and separation. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances where each retains its own properties. It's like inviting a group of friends to a party. They all come together to have fun, but each one keeps their unique personality. Now think about the air we breathe, a fresh salad on your plate, or a salt water solution in a science lab. They're all mixtures. In the air, different gases like oxygen and nitrogen coexist. In a salad, various ingredients like lettuce, tomatoes and cucumbers mingle. And in a salt water solution, salt and water share the same space. Yet in all these mixtures, each component maintains its own identity. So, in a nutshell, when we combine substances without changing their properties, we get a mixture. And that's our introduction to the fascinating world of mixtures. Ever noticed how sugar disappears in your hot cup of tea? This is an everyday example of substances dissolving. Dissolving is the process where particles of a substance, known as the solute, spread out evenly within a liquid, or the solvent, forming a solution. Now not all substances dissolve at the same rate. The rate of dissolving depends on three main factors. First up is temperature. As a general rule, solutes dissolve faster in warmer solvents. That's why your sugar dissolves quicker in hot tea than in iced tea. Secondly, agitation or stirring can speed up the process. When you stir your tea, you help distribute the heat and push sugar particles into contact with the water, speeding up the dissolving process. Lastly, the nature of the solute and solvent comes into play. Some substances naturally dissolve faster than others. So remember, the quicker the sugar disappears in your tea, the faster it's dissolving. Do you love playing with slime? Ever wondered how it's made? Well, let's dive right into the magical world of glitter slime. Now, making glitter slime is not just fun, but it's also a fascinating science experiment that you can do right at home. To start with, you'll need three basic ingredients glue, liquid starch, and of course, some sparkling glitter. You might be wondering why these particular ingredients? Well, it's all about the science of polymers. Glue contains a polymer called polyvinyl acetate, which is a long flexible chain of molecules. When you add liquid starch to the glue, it acts as a crosslinker, linking these long chains together. The result, a wonderfully gooey and stretchy slime. Now let's get to the fun part, making the slime. First, pour some glue into a bowl. Then sprinkle in your glitter. Mix the two together until the glitter is evenly spread throughout the glue. You can use as much or as little glitter as you like, depending on how sparkly you want your slime to be. Next, it's time to add the liquid starch. Pour it in slowly, mixing as you go. As you stir, you'll start to see the slime forming. It might look a bit messy at first, but keep stirring. The more you mix, the more the glue and starch combine to create that perfect slime consistency. Once your slime is formed, it's time to get your hands dirty. Knead the slime with your hands to help it become even more stretchy and gooey. And there you have it, your very own homemade glitter slime. Remember the key to making great slime is to experiment. Try different amounts of glue, starch and glitter until you find the combination that makes your perfect slime. And voila, you have your glitter slime ready to play with. Making glitter slime is not only about having fun, but it's also about understanding the science behind it. So, the next time you're playing with your glitter slime, remember, you're not just a slime enthusiast, you're also a budding scientist. Now, what if we want to remove something from our mixture? Imagine we've got a mixture of sand and water, and we want to separate them. The method we'll use is called filtration. Filtration is a pretty nifty process that scientists use to separate a mixture of a solid and a liquid. In our case, the sand is the solid, and the water is the liquid. But how does it work? Well, it's all about the size of the particles. The filter acts like a very tiny net. The holes in this net are so small that only certain things can pass through. The water, which is made up of very tiny particles, can pass through the filter. But the sand, which is made up of much larger particles, gets caught in the filter. So when we pour our mixture of sand and water into our filter, the water drips through into a container below, leaving the sand behind. The water that has passed through the filter is called the filtrate. But what if we have a mixture of two liquids? Can we use filtration then? Well, that depends on whether one of the liquids can be turned into a solid. For example, if we have a mixture of water and salt, we can heat the mixture until the water evaporates, leaving behind solid salt. Then, we can use filtration to separate the salt from the remaining liquid. 
But what if we can't turn one of the liquids into a solid? In that case, we'd need to use a different method of separation, like distillation. But that's a story for another time. Filtration is a great method for separating mixtures, whether we're trying to get clean water or we're trying to remove impurities from a solution. It's a simple yet powerful tool in the world of science. So with filtration, we can separate the parts we don't want in our mixture. It's a bit like having a superpower, being able to pick and choose what stays and what goes. And the best part? You can try this at home. Just remember to always do these experiments with adult supervision. Now let's move on to our next exciting